Craig Dosti here to share some tips on mounting Mejo with the Tally Tribe. Uh, you want to be sober when you're doing this because you're going to be putting 13 holes in each ski. And the carpenter's rule is absolutely advised. Uh, first step is to figure out where you want your boot to be. Boot center, where the manufacturers recommend it, I do that. Or shifted, or app, your call. Whatever you decide, put the boot in that position and then put masking tape on, top, on the top sheet around the toe and the heel and then a strip down the center. And you're going to use the masking tape to scribe lines corresponding to the center of the boot and the center of the ski lengthwise and then all the places where you're going to be drilling holes. Um, I'll suggest two ways to mark the center line. Um, first, you can do it with a compass. This is relatively simple but requires some precision in where you locate the end of the compass. Okay, it's got to be right at the ski edge along what you uh, described as the ski boot center line, wherever you're going to put it. And then you uh, make marks at either end, front and back, from both sides. And again, you got to make sure that anchoring arm of the compass is right next to the edge along the boot center line. And then where those two arcs intersect, that's the center. And then you just draw a line between the front intersection and the rear intersection. That is your ski center line. Now the other way you could do it is uh, with a jig that um, has center holes and you just get uh, a center punch. I get one from Quiver Killer. It's nine millimeters in diameter so it fits in snug on the, uh, the post. And then I just put a dimple into the masking tape at the heel end and at the toe end. And, uh, and then again, draw a line between the two. Um, wouldn't hurt to do both methods and hopefully the lines are exactly the same. Okay, now we can take the uh, Mejo template, line it up with the ski center line, and then uh, across the boot center line you want to put the marks for the boot sole length of your boot, whatever that is. And then uh, go around, um, tape it in place of course, make sure it doesn't wiggle, and then center punch the holes for the toe and the shift bump. And then we are ready for the moment of truth, drilling the holes, eight of them, with a stepped drill bit. Um, if you got a wood core, no metal on the top sheet, I recommend a three and a half by uh, nine millimeter uh, drill. And then uh, if you, there is a metal top sheet in the mounting zone, then I use a 4.1 by nine millimeter. And then I like to um, kind of tap the threads just by taking one of the screws and going in a few threads and backing it out just to make sure that the screws go in straight once I'm putting it all together. And then don't forget to connect the cable rod. Okay, you're going to have to take it out of the uh, spring box. And now is a really good time while you're at it, if you're going to do it, to um, put on the brakes. Uh, and if you're not, you can just move past. I'm not, so I'm moving past. Uh, of course, a little dab of glue. You could use wood glue or uh, I use Gorilla Glue, epoxy, I suppose, if you need it. And then I uh, basically install the toe piece with a low torque setting on uh, a drill bit uh, and then um, just tighten them all the way around. Again, low torque. This is not the final tightening. Okay, and if you hadn't done it before, now is a good time to make sure the boot is centered when clamped in by the pins. And fortunately, in this case, the heel was dead center in the back, which is great. That's another reason why you want those lines there. And uh, now before you uh, add the springs and the uh, spring box, it's a good time to uh, put in the shift bumper because you're going to want that actually. And uh, I put glue also on the base of the shift bumper because it tends to bow up sometimes and that can cause the um, spring box to jump out of tour mode. You don't want that to happen so I just glue it down. And now I'm going to go around and do a final torque on the toe 
giving everything a good solid grunt and a half tightening. Now it's easier to add the claw now for the second heel and the springs before you install the heel post. Okay, so um, just know that uh, as you're doing this, the uh, the red shift stub is going to want to line up on that bumper, and when it does, it when you want to add the thumb nut, the springs are going to have tension. So what you do is you release it, lift it over that bumper so that it comes flat. And now there will be no tension. And it's very easy to add the thumb nuts and tighten them up on the springs. And you might as well at this point, because the heel post isn't in the way, um, tighten them up to where you want them to be. And now we can finish things off by drilling, tapping, and gluing the holes for the heel post. Uh, and then I finish the screws uh, on the heel with light torque setting from the drill bit because these are not uh, going to be taking a lot of stress and I don't need them to be super tight nor do I need to risk um, cracking the plastic. Hope those tips helped you. Greg Dasty here signing off. Remember, be sober, drill straight, and don't forget the carpenter's rule. <laughs>